In Privacy Watch, these days technology is literally all around mm -hmm. us, including right beneath our feet. A startup based in Milwaukee is helping businesses use floor sensors to track people's movements. It's called Scanalytics, and their smart floor sensors are being used worldwide. Co-founder and CEO of Scanalytics, Joe Scanlon, joins us now from Greenville, South Carolina. Is that really your real name, <laughs> Joe? It is, it is. I didn't change it for the company. All right, Joe, so what do these sensors do and how do they work? Sure, so uh, it acts like a subflooring system in a lot of applications. So typically when you're installing a floor, you're putting an underlayment down. Uh, and we're effectively replacing that underlayment with a uh, smart underlayment that um, allows your floor to be uh, very similar to a touch screen. So we're uh, able to understand how people are interacting with and consuming uh, really any physical environment. So give us an example of just how these would be used then. Sure. So uh, very obviously it's used in uh, retail and trade show environments and uh, a lot of those customers want to better understand how they can keep up with the change in consumer behavior inside the store. Uh, so very similar to how they use analytics on a website to make constant design uh, changes and decisions. Uh, they use our technology to let them understand uh, how to better staff, how to uh, create a better experience for uh, their customers. Um, we're also very excited about a lot of the other physical spaces that were installed in like uh, elderly care space to help uh, understand and predict and prevent a fall event, for example, by better understanding how uh, patients' movement might deteriorate over time and what that might lead to. Um, and we also have a lot of uh, customers using it in the commercial office environment, so better understanding how their employees are using their space so they can increase productivity and uh, morale for their uh, employees. So give us some real life applications outside of how the companies are using them. Could they change individuals? In other words, I, I get that the companies are using this to analyze customer movement or employee movement, but does this do anything for us? Right. Yeah, so um, in, in one sense, it's all about ha having the building uh, operate sort of like an autonomous nervous system, right? So. Uh, we believe that the building should be able to optimize for comfort of the occupants. So for example, in uh, any physical environment, by better understanding how people are moving through the floor, it can adjust things like uh, the ventilation or the lighting um, and other environmental um, sensors and, and uh, the ability to provide a better experience for the consumer or for uh, really any occupant of any building. Um, so it has a lot to do with that as well as uh, as a shopper, for example, uh, we're actually very much focused on privacy, so being able to provide a better experience without needing to understand your uh, gender, your name, or you know how much you weigh. A lot of people ask if we do that, and we, we don't track how much people weigh. So, um, so very much focused on providing better experiences for how you interact with the physical environment, because we, we spend 90% of our entire lives inside of a building, which is... Uh, it's kind of depressing, but uh, we see it as a big opportunity. So you mentioned that you are focused on privacy, and that, that's exactly what I thought when I read about this technology. I thought, oh man, now you're gonna know exactly how I'm walking, sure. you're gonna know that Vlad went to the black t-shirt section six <laughs> times. If you know Vlad, he has a thing with <laughs> black t-shirts. Yeah, and section. the guitar right. store seven times. Um, so how do you ensure people's privacy though? Sure, so we're not tethering it to any sort of consumer device like a uh, phone or an image. So it's really um, being able to monitor, you know, two feet that are on the ground, uh, watch where those feet are going so that the environment can make changes. Uh, but it's not collecting anything that would otherwise allow us to uh, have big data or have data around uh, those personally identified information. Um, and that's actually a big reason why a lot of our customers have adopted us is that the technology solely focused on pinging your smartphone is um, somewhat creepy and a lot of customers and consumers aren't uh, interested in, in giving up that information. But Joe, let me let me just throw on my skeptical journalist hat for a moment. You, uh, you sure. don't foresee a, a, a situation or a world where a company, because Anne-Marie mentioned the guitar store, you don't see a, a world where, you, based on my movements at a department store, if I'm always going to the guitar section of the store, I'm always going to the black t-shirt section of the store, that that data can't be sold to a guitar store, like Guitar Center, a big conglomerate, so they can all of a sudden send a message or a pop-up on my phone that says, hey, this new guitar is on sale, because they'll know that I like sure. guitars. 
Sure. So uh, with our platform, if if it's not tethered to or, or combined with another platform like you're describing with the phone, uh, then we have no connection to the consumer's phone. So, uh, for example, if you were standing in front of a guitar for 45 seconds and the retailer wanted to change the content on a screen next to that guitar, uh, that might be something that they, they could do or text a nearby associate to uh, come by and help you. Uh, but we're not tethering it to you know your device or your phone, so it, it is something that uh, very much so can be controlled by the consumer. So if uh, the message, if you don't like the message, it's um, it's not something sent to any personal device. But you wouldn't. But but beyond sending it to a personal device, couldn't you sell the analytics to a guitar store? Sure. So what we're doing with the aggregate data, because a lot of people do ask that question, is you know we're collecting a lot of information about how people are moving through a space. Um, we're doing that much more so to better understand how uh, design of environment can be improved versus selling it to advertisers or selling it to, um, like you're describing, selling it to the retailer to have further communication with you. Um, so we're, we're really focused not just in retail but in a lot of other environments to understand uh, how can we improve physical environments altogether from a design, architecture, uh, even at neuroscience level um, versus trying to make it easier to send an ad to someone. So um, aside from, of course, showing you as we continue to grow that that's not what our uh, mission is, I, I think sharing it here is a, a good way of doing that. You brought up neuroscience. I, I find this sort of technology so fascinating because you're right. Like this is the sort of thing that can make you know, a trip to the mall much more pleasurable. Mm -hmm. But it's also in the best interest of the companies that pay for this technology to make it um, also more challenging for me to turn down that purchase, mm. to funnel me right to the, right. The, the, the spot where I can't resist, you know, picking up that new pair of shoes, even though I already have six other sure, pairs sure. of shoes, you know, 100, that, 100. that the technology that can improve our life, there's sort of a thin line between improving our life and manipulating our lives. Yeah, totally. And, and that's why uh, I think what we're doing is really unique in the sense that um, because it isn't someone's, again, smartphone or some image that we're putting on a camera, uh, we're really measuring the, the conscious and the subconscious movements. And so um, that's something that buildings today don't have access to. So they don't really know uh, or can't provide applications like, for example, when we sell to a uh, building itself, they might start by using it for the analytics, but that same exact information on the floor can be used to drive a, a security application, for example. So uh, we're really excited about a company we're working with that is using our technology for uh, active shooter situations. So to be able to understand uh, where people are moving at that exact second and then relay that to emergency services by the time they get there, and there's a much higher chance of being able to identify where that active shooter is, what they're, where, you know, where they're moving at that time, and where people are congregated. Um, so, to, <laughs> at the mercy of uh, sounding cliche, it is truly, I think, about making the world a better place by better understanding how people are truly consuming that space versus, like you mentioning, uh, getting them to buy the, uh, you know, red shoes over blue, which <laughs> is about all I know about fashion. So. <laughs> Joe Scanlon, thank you so much for joining us. This is a really interesting conversation. Thank you for having me. <laughs>